friends, if we haven't met, I'm Scarlett from Chapin's Homestead and I'm so excited because today makes me feel like it's the first day of the harvest. Although it's not. I'm not technically harvesting anything today, but I am getting everything ready. So today is preparation day for the upcoming harvest season. So we're going to pull out all the things that we need and we use to preserve food throughout this time of year and it gets really busy. Once the food starts coming in, it does not wait on you, so you have to do something with it. So we're gonna pull out the pressure canners, water bath canners, food saver, dehydrator, all the things that we use to preserve food for the rest of the year. Go along with us today as we pull out all the things for the upcoming harvest so we'll be ready when the food actually does come. So that we can can, cause some it'll be, I think we'll be able to get some mulberries here in the next couple weeks. Anyways, I'm going to show you the stuff that I have and maybe it'll help you out and what you need if you are planning on preserving food this year. Whether you grow it from your own garden or you locally source it from a farmer's market or a friend's family, however you come across it. Okay, so what I have in front of me right now is a pressure canner. Not a pressure canner, a water bath canner. I am so sorry. This is a water bath canner and you use it to can high acid foods like tomatoes, peaches, pears, jellies, jams, um, pickles, I'm trying to think of a few other things. That's what you use this one for. You can also water bath can in a pressure canner. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I have two water bath canners. And when I bought them, they were very inexpensive. One of them I bought. My husband bought me one of them and another one his aunt gifted to me. And I'm going to take a pause to let you know that that is my 101 year old father who is in there making scissors. He's beating on something, so I apologize for the picking. I know it's amplified on the mic, but I have tried to stop multiple times and he doesn't stop, so I'm just going with it this time. Okay, so one of them was gifted to me by my husband's aunt, and one of them was he bought for me, and the price was very inexpensive when he bought this one. The price has increased. So, if you ever plan in the future on pressure canning, then if you have the money to go ahead and buy the pressure canner, they're not that much more expensive now, I would get the pressure canner. If you're not ready, you can water bath can in a pressure canner. So you could still do your water bath canning in the pressure canner what time you're getting ready to pressure can. Like if you're not quite there yet, but you plan on doing it in the future, instead of spending all the money on a water bath canner since the price has gone up. But anyways, if you don't ever plan on pressure canning, a water bath canner is good for, like I said, high acid foods. So your jellies, jams, tomatoes, foods like that, pickles. There's a lot of stuff that you can water bath can and there are unlimited resources that tell you how to can, what you have to put in them, what kind of, you know, you wanna add your lemon juice, what kind of salts to use. Um, so many different things and since I said salt, I'm gonna go ahead and show you pickling and canning salt. You can also use like the Himalayan pink salt, the sea salt. And the reason, the difference in this, and table salt has iodine in it. And it's not gonna change the taste or the flavor of the food that you can, but it will change the color of it. And no one wants like a brown, unappealing jar of whatever on your shelf. Whatever you can, say you put green beans or whatever you don't want them to turn brown from the iodine in the salt so that is the only reason that you don't use that to can with if that's all you had you could use it just be prepared that your food is going to change colors so you can either get the pickling and canning salt or you can get the pure like himalayan pink salt um and i think there's there's a few other ones that you can use okay now on to this is just a little pot um, to put like berries or something to boil them down before I can them. Okay, this big bad boy is a pressure canner. And hang on, I'm gonna show you this is, not that this one doesn't make me happy, but let me show you what my husband got me out of yard sale. All right, so I'm back. This is the All American Canner and I am beyond excited to use it. We are gonna test it out later and see if everything is working. I do wanna change this spout. Um, I'm pretty sure I can, but I am gonna look it up just to make sure so that I can actually put a pound um, on here for my elevation. Okay, so this pressure canner, if you're wanting to can meats, 
um, different things. You can can whole meals. Ball puts out a canning book. Thing preservation, all preservation, canning, everything you need to know about preservation. I'm not sure I'll link it down below and because canning is not something that you can play around with you do need to follow the recipe you do need to can it for a certain amount of times because if you're going to put all of this work into it you don't want to put something on your shelf that you're not going to be able to eat later it's a lot of money and a lot of time wasted so you do want to follow you know follow what it says to do because there is a science to it um, but anyways this is my all-american pressure canner I'm very excited about it this year and don't be scared of pressure canning i'm sure everybody's grandma and aunt and uncle has told you about a pressure canner exploding in someone's kitchen they are fairly safe you're not going to have to worry about that just make sure that everything is correct everything is in working order this one has these hinges that still tighten up that you can use um, and then make sure don't just go by what recipe you're following because I live in southern West Virginia Where I'm at below or above sea level changes the pressure So you want to look it up to make sure that you're canning correctly Okay, so this I'm going to I cannot wait to make bone broth in it and can deer meat and chicken and There's so many things potatoes. I'm gonna try the canned potatoes Anyways, there's so many things that I want to can in this and I'm going to take you along with it because pressure canning is fairly new to me as well. And I also got this Presto pressure canner at a yard sale, another yard sale. This I think I told you about this in an earlier video. I got this one at a yard sale and I'm very excited about it as well. So, Oh, and another tip. If you're canning in a pressure canner like this, make sure that you put some oil like some olive oil or some kind of oil around the rim and you can even put it around the rim of this just so when you're done you'll be able to get the lid back off of it or there is a big possibility that your lid is going to be stuck and you do not want that to happen keep your cans off of the bottom of the pot you don't want them sitting on the bottom and then there's another one okay and then of course the the rack to set the jars down in there. Yes, I have a little girl who wants to go get more rocks. Hi. Hi. Okay, so this is my pressure canner, and I cannot wait to do videos with you guys on the pressure canner. Now, other things to talk about that we need to get ready. So we have our water bath canner, we have a pressure canner. We talked about salt. I do use salt when I'm making fermented foods. So like cabbage, I will chop up the cabbage, put the salt on it, and put it back in the jar. And I will do a video on that later. Um, but most of the time in actual canning, the salt is for flavor. Now, this is something else that I use. It is pickling lime. Use it to keep their pickles crisp. If you're making um, pickles, they soak their cucumbers in it. I normally don't do that because pickles last no time on my shelf. <laughs> But I do want to try that this year. But I use it to water glass eggs. And if you give me a second, I'll go get a jar and show you. There and got a jar. This is my water glass eggs. And I put the pickling lime hi. in here. Emma said hi. I put the pickling lime in here to preserve the egg. Have later on when my chickens aren't laying. I have very few things left from canning season last year. So we have went through everything. So I'm gonna to try to can more. I have a family of seven, so it goes quick. Um, these are green beans that I water bath canned last year. And these are um, banana peppers. So these are the pickled banana peppers. I canned those last year as well. Whew, I'm out of breath from all that running. Okay, so now we have our water bath canner. I have my rack that goes in there so this is what i lower my drawers into my water bath canner i have that that's essential i have my pressure canners that we are going to test these two out since they're new to make sure that they're in working order so i'm going to set them it is extremely heavy i'm going to set it to the side and a second ago i had said that canning books were very useful and they are like i'm familiar with the like i said i'll link it below i should have looked it up the um, ball canning book 
But this is the instructions, the little manual that come with the pressure cutter. And this is also very, very, very helpful. So keep your manual because there's a lot of good information in there on how, like this one even has, it has meat recipes, poultry recipes, seafood recipes, soup recipes. It's like an endless supply. It tells you, let's see, amount of liquid, one cup, eight minutes, four minutes. Okay, telling you like, okay, so it says if you want them soft, tender, but crisp, the amount of liquid, the size of the vegetable. It tells you exactly what to do. So keep your manual. These are very, very useful. And then it tells you what to say at your pressure cleaner at according to where are you at? What elevation you're at? So keep this. I'm going to say it one more time. Keep this. It's very useful. It can come in. It's very handy. Other things that I want to have on hand at my house this canning season is pectin. So soon we're going to be getting berries. Blackberries, raspberries. We're going to be getting strawberries. And I want to be able to make jellies. So you want to have pectin on hand so you can get the powdered form you can get liquid form i have it in these boxes i have also i normally have a jar lexi is going to get a pen and as i say things i don't have will you write it down babe i normally have a jar of pectin strainers are really good to have um this little fella here i've had forever <laughs> so he looks kind of rough but having a funnel will save you a tremendous amount of mess. So if you have the funnel, you send him in there and you pour your stuff in and it saves you so much mess. I use the same one. I think you can, I mean, of course you can buy them for the wild mess, but this one works just fine. And then even for jellies, it's awesome. So get a funnel. It's definitely worth it. Another thing what I want on that is these jar tongs. So when you're getting the stuff out of the canner, cause some things you leave set, some things you don't, according to what you're, you're going by, what your recipe says, you don't wanna have to try to fight with getting these out of the canner with a rag or a towel because it's wet, it's water. So you just reach down in with these and you pull it up. And it also helps setting them down in there. So if you're canning something and the, the, what you're putting in the jar is hot and you're putting that in hot water, it's a whole lot easier to do it this way and it keeps you from tilting the jar because you don't want any of the whatever you're canning on the inside to go around the tap. So the lid that you're going to put on there, you want to keep this. So take you some like distilled vinegar after you get, say you're making jelly, after you get your jam jelly down in the jar, take the vet rag with white vinegar and wipe this off and put the lid on. This isn't a lid, but anyway, put your lid on. Here they are. And then you can use this. It would also have a ring on it to put it in there to keep you from getting anything back up there so you don't want to tilt your jar. Now, jars, very important. You want to have jars. If you're canning, you have to have jars. I get jars multiple different places. My local hardware store, they have jars. Um, Walmart has jars. I get jars at yard sales, I get jars at thrift stores. Anybody who is getting rid of jars, they do not go bad. Use the old jars. What you need to look out for is dents, cracks, chips. So look around the ring, make sure it looks good. Check the jar over. As long as there is no cracks, divots in it, you will be just fine. You do not want to have, you cannot can in something with chips in it. You don't want to because you don't want to be picking glass up out of your pressure canner or your water bath canner. And their jars come in many different sizes. Jelly jars, pints, quarts. I don't have a pint sitting here. Um, gallons, half gallons, you can can in multiple different things. Next, let's see. Okay, so let's talk about um, lids and bands. So growing up, I called them caps and rings. <laughs> And that's what I still call them. So these are the wide mouth 
lids and you want you're not you never are supposed to reuse these so you're supposed to use a new one anytime you are canning so it just sits on there like I said when you're canning make sure that you keep this surface clean before you put the lid on and then you just finger tight the ring on anytime I see them for a reasonable price I try to buy them my husband bought me these not too awful long ago I don't really need any more of the bands but because you can just say those those are reusable it's the actual lids that aren't reusable now you could use them for some other project like you freeze something you could use them to freeze okay so we've been over the pressure can of the water bath canner next something that I use a lot would be for freezer food so anything you're going to stick in the freezer I have two I have food savers my best friend gave me this one and I think my mom gave me this one but these are really nice you can also use Ziploc bags so if you do not have a food saver do not fret for many years I used Ziploc bags and they work just fine so Foods that you want to freeze. I know a lot of people like to freeze green beans. Like I said earlier, I've tried it. I don't like them. Um, I like them canned better. So, you know, if you like them frozen, this is a way to do it. So you could put them in a food saver or you can, like I said, a Ziploc bag. What I do like frozen is corn. So we do a lot of freezer corn. So I use this for corn. I use this for meats. I use this for a lot of different things. But from the garden, mostly I'm freezing corn trying to think of something else that I don't mind frozen sometimes I'll chop up bell peppers and I'll freeze those I don't mind those frozen um, fruits I have stuck in the freezer that I'm going to can later just to keep them there anyways if you I like I grew up eating canned food so I guess that's why I'm kind of partial to it I like everything canned more so than I do put in the freezer but whatever you are used to whatever your family will eat is what you should do that's the food saver what I do need is some bags even if you have the food saver if you don't have bags it's not gonna help you out any so just make sure that before this canon season gets up on you that you already have everything you're gonna need because it's really it's not any fun when you're all ready and everything's ready and you don't have what you need so make sure you have bags for your food saver or freezer bags or whatever it is that you want to use to freeze also you can freeze with jars I don't I have I don't do it a lot because my family is too rough there's seven of us and they're always rumbling around and once the glass is frozen it seems like it's really easy to break but if you're going to can in jars I suggest that you use a wide mouth jar it seems like I've had a whole lot better luck in them and make sure that you leave plenty of room for it to expand and other than that you can freeze in jars it's perfectly fine and then that's when you could reuse those taps that we were talking about earlier the lids you could use reusable ones on that so if you want to freeze in jars that they work just fine as long as you don't have family like I do who cling them around <laughs> another way that we preserve food is with the dehydrator one day when it's in my budget I want one of the bigger dehydrator with the metal racks not there today obviously but that is what I want later on but anyways for dehydrating you can dehydrate so many different things last um, garden season I dehydrated hot peppers which was a nightmare for everyone but I took it out on the back porch so that was fine the only thing is is even after I washed it we put some bananas on it and they were really hot bananas so since then, it has been soaked and scrubbed and soaked and scrubbed, so I'm pretty sure we got all the paper residue off of it, so watch out for that. You can dehydrate herbs in here, so your spices. You can, there, oh my goodness, I see, I haven't tried a lot of it, but I have seen endless things that people dehydrate, and once you get started on it, it does become addictive because you can store it so easily. So, uh, if you are into dehydrating things, it's very a very easy process you chop it up you put it on there and move on if you have one like I do you do have to rotate the rack I was going to get one my suggestion would not be to get one of these round ones 
On mine, the heater is up top, so you have to rotate the trays to get them to um, dry evenly. If you had one of the square ones with the heater in the back, it pushes it towards the front and then everything is, you don't have to rotate the trays, everything is dispersed evenly, so you just put it in there, forget about it, and move on. But with this one, you do have to rotate the trays. It's not in your budget, this one works just fine. I have dehydrated everything under the sun in it, and it works just fine. I normally set it on my porch if it's something, well, for one, it's hot. Um, I set it on my back porch, I plug it in, I have a little shelf out there, and it does just fine. These are some of the things that you will need according to what you're planning on canning. And my biggest tip for canning, for food preservation in general, and for gardening, they're two different things, but this is the same <laughs> number one tip. Do not grow food that you or your family will not eat. Do not can or preserve food that you or your family will not eat. It is so hard because we see all these things. Me and my daughter grow, have grown everything. We try to grow radishes last year. Well, we don't really like radishes. Why? Because you get excited. You just get excited. It says it's time to plant radishes and we go jumping out there because you're excited for the new season. It's warming up. It's time to plant in the garden and anything that you can put in the ground, sometimes it just overtakes you and you start planting, growing stuff. So, like I said, if you don't like it, don't grow it. Don't preserve it because it's going to sit on your shelf and it's so much time and money and energy and just the labor of love that goes into this. You want to be able to consume it later. Put all of that time into stuff that you love, you enjoy, and that you and your family will eat. That's my number one tip above all things. And if you mess something up, try again. Don't give up. I have made so many jellies that you would think that I would be perfect at it and there's still times that they come out and they're liquid, liquidy or I have maybe overcooked them I guess you could say and they're kind of really thick. I've made preserves and put too much sugar in them or not get the sugar mixed up and they're kind of be like little granulates down in there. I've messed stuff up but it still comes out okay. Like if your jellies come out as liquid use them as a syrup or an ice cream topper or just you know label it as something else um and try again look it up follow the recipe see it like go back over what you did and you'll get it um most things really aren't that hard once you learn how to do it and you get it under your belt the next time it just becomes like nature like you just know what to do and you do it so it's only intimidating the first time well the first few times and then once you learn how to do it it's just like anything else like riding a bike that's my dad do yet picking <laughs> on those scissors one day i have to do a video on the scissors he makes at 101 it's pretty impressive this is just a baseline of things that you may need canning you definitely have to have the jars you're either going to have to have a pressure canner or a water bath canner you're going to have to have lids rings and lids lids and bands taps and rings that's what i grew up calling them taps and rings but i know it seems like everybody calls them lids and bands or whatever you call them you have to have them We've had the windows open and there's a fly in here and it's driving me absolutely completely crazy so i pretty much showed you the basics if i was going to can the stuff that i would get out and of course whatever recipe you're going to use um is important to what you have things to have on hand to make sure that you have plenty of is if you do a lot of jellies jams um fruits or pickles a lot of pickling recipes like if you're pickling um different things, peppers, cucumbers, stuff like that. A lot of those call for sugar, so make sure you have plenty of sugar on hand because you don't want to get started and then not have enough to do whatever you're doing. Your salt, um, lemon juice, lemon juice. Now, you can can with the green and yellow label. I may have some. Okay, so I don't have any. You can can with the lemon juice that you get, the concentrated lemon juice that you get at any local grocery store. That works fine. And most things, I don't mind the taste of it, but you can also get just pure lemon juice. That's organic lemon juice. It doesn't have any, any fillers, anything. It's literally, it says ingredient lemon juice. Um, and there are things that I would, that I like the flavor of it better. So what you'll have to do is just start canning and kind of go by what you like the taste of, like what lemon juice you want to use in your canning. This or like chopping um, cabbage, 
is what I like to use it for. So I like to make kraut and sometimes this is just the kids like to twist it. Or you can just use your food processor. Works just the same. Okay, so these are the things that I use for canning for this coming season. I cannot wait to can with you guys. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with me and my family learning about what we're going to use this canning season. Hopefully it's helpful and gives you some ideas of what you may need for this canning season. Always remember to only can what you will actually eat, what you love, what your family loves, and only grow that as well. I've already made those mistakes because I saw something beautiful on Pinterest or Facebook and somebody else was canning, but I didn't really like it. Anyways, lesson learned. I'm trying to prevent you guys from making that same mistake. But thank you so much for spending time with me. I love you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you again in a couple days.